3D design for 3D printing. Today we look at scenarios where to get a perfect fit later on, we first need to design our parts a little bit sloppy. This video is part of a series on learning 3D design for creating custom 3D printed parts using a free Onshape account. The full playlist, ideal for beginners, is linked below in the video description. Today we're looking at when and how to design sloppy parts, and by that I mean designing in built-in adjustability so you can fine-tune later on for difficult situations. This video at its core is about practical printing, so let's look at our first scenario, which is designing a tablet holder. My son plays the drums and he would like to put his tablet on this horizontal bar so we can plug it into the electronic drum set and play along to songs. This is a perfect opportunity to design a 3D printed solution. The first thing I need to do is to get some dimensions and a ruler is sufficient for the overall size of the tablet, but for everything else I'm using digital calipers. If this is something you don't own, there's a link to an inexpensive set from Amazon in the description. For this project, I need to pay attention to where the headphone jack is, as it's crucial to the tablet being used while drumming. So into Onshape, and I have a sketch to mock up the situation. I've got my horizontal rod that I want to attach this to, I've got a crude outline of the tablet, including the back case, and I've added some crucial features, such as a point to show where the screen starts, the position of the headphone jack, and the clearance I need for the cable to be plugged in. One solution would be to remove the end fitting and make a sleeve that can slide on from the side, which seems like a simple idea. And here is a representation of that sleeve. But what diameter do I make the inner surface? Do I get it to match what I measured on the rod exactly, risk having it too small and not going on? Do I make it even smaller than that to ensure a tight interference fit? Or do I allow extra width and risk it being too loose and the whole tablet stand rotating around freely? Well, the first part of my solution is to give a healthy gap, one that you'd think would make this part far too floppy. And the second part of the solution is to actually split the sleeve open so it can clip on without any disassembly. This of course makes the part fit even looser, but the key here is to design it so we can put a bolt between the two halves and as we tighten it, clamp our piece securely on the beam of the drum kit. Fast forward to a more refined design, We've added some more sketch elements, which have been covered in detail in earlier videos, joining our pole clamp into the tablet holder. We extrude one way to create the main body, and then back the other to put a cap on the end so the tablet can't slide out. Creating our tensioning mechanism is very simple. On one side of our clamp, we have a simple sketch with two circles. The smaller hole goes the whole way through the middle for the bolt, and the larger hole will provide clearance for the bolt's head. And then on the bottom of the clamp, we sketch a hexagon, and I've set the width to be half a millimeter wider than what I measure for an M5 nut. One more extruded cut, and we have room for a trap nut that will work together with the bolt and clamp these two together. I ended up adding a little bit more material just to hold the corners of the tablet securely, which I then mirrored to the other side to create a matching half. And then the final part of the design was a center section that would further support the tablet without blocking the screen. Time to print, and for the center section, I went for a sparkly PLA. And for the two side pieces, I went for PETG because it's slightly more flexible than PLA. I used long M3 countersunk bolts to join the three pieces together, which gives us our final design ready for fitment. The two end pieces with the clamps flex and clip into position. This is actually quite satisfying, but as you can see, the fitment is very loose and sloppy as we designed it. But once we add our bolt and nut to each side, we can torque them both up, the clamps flex shut, and finally we have a perfect fit. With installation done, I call on the client to give it a test run. The only mishap was his alignment of the headphone jack, but before long, he got it straight and connected. As he started to play, it was clear the tablet was nice and solid in the face of the vibration. These are my favorite types of projects because this solution just doesn't exist off the shelf, so 3D printing it is the only way. Experienced designers might see this as an obvious solution, but for beginners, it might be seen as a new and efficient way forward. Let's move on with our second scenario. Scenario two is an outdoor electronic door controller. You might remember a previous video I made where I set up a Wi-Fi controlled backyard automation system 
complete with 3D printed components that feed my miniature goats automatically on a schedule and also provide them with fresh water from a toilet inspired self flushing bowl. I'm pleased to say that the system is working remarkably well. I'm also halfway through building some more climbing equipment for them, but the main development is building them an extended run in the bush portion of our yard behind their usual area. It's not a huge area, but it does have some nice natural features for them to climb on, bark to nibble on, which is one of their favorites, and a launching pad to ambush each other. Access in and out is provided by this sliding panel that I installed into the fence. And it's important that we can shut this at night after they come in to keep predators away from them and the chickens. To operate the door, I purchased this chicken door automated system from eBay. It's meant to be able to lift up a kilo and a half, but I was disappointed to find that in reality, it can't even lift up the 750 gram door that we purchased. So I need a new solution and here's my plan. Firstly, a control box on the top of the fence with solar power and battery, just like the control box for the existing system. And like the tablet holder, if I use a clamping system, I'll be able to slide the box from right to left to better align with the door below. The remaining alignment will still be crucial, however, as I need my mechanism in the box to line up vertically with the hole below to prevent binding. So let's get to work with some sloppy design that will allow a perfect fit later on. After removing the metal base plate, we have access on both sides to holes, which we're going to use for mounting on the underside. From there, I take some measurements and repeat the steps from earlier in the video with a 2D sketch that gets extruded into three dimensions, followed by a cutout for a bolt and a nut trap on the rear. These mounts get attached to the bottom of the box before a quick test fit on a similar piece of fence. Once again, the fitment is quite sloppy, but once we tension everything up, the fitment becomes perfect. The lower half of this solar panel bracket fitted to the lid, I previously designed when making the first control box. But once we introduce the solar panel, our next piece of sloppy design is needed. I'm not sure how it's meant to work, but for me, I drilled and then riveted in some nut certs around the frame of the solar panel. It's close, but they're not quite perfect in spacing. Here's the other half of the bracket, and I've built leeway into the design in a really simple way. The holes on the end only need to be big enough for M3 bolts, but because of the uncertainty, I provided a 5mm hole. As you can see, there is far too much clearance here, but if we add a washer to the top of that bolt, the base of our bracket, can still fit with poorly aligned holes, but will appear perfect once the bolts are tensioned and the washers help clamp the part into position. With the simplest of simple little tricks, we have perfect fitment, thanks to the fact we designed some slop into our mounting holes. Continuing, I milled a cutout in the aluminium plate where string could pass through from the door to my winding motor. I also printed out a two layer thick drilling template that I could line up with this cutout and mark with a permanent marker all of the places I wanted mounting holes. I drilled these with a 2.5 millimeter drill bit and then tapped an M3 thread in each hole. I bolted the base plate back in and used it as a guide to route out the same size opening in the bottom of the plastic enclosure. I didn't have a bearing on my router bit, so it's a bit wonky, but better than me doing it by eye. Because we need the motor to have accurate alignment with the door, but we don't know yet exactly where this position will be, we're designing the motor mount with plenty of slop so we can fine tune later. And here's the first part of it. As you can see, once again, we have a simple 2D sketch matched to the motor's mounting holes and lifting it a certain distance off the base plate. Like with the ends of the tablet stand, we can extrude one direction and then the other. And all that's left is to put the mounting holes in the bottom, except I'm not going to do holes. I'm going to do slots instead so I can move this from side to side. So let's draw a sketch on the top but then come underneath and select the use tool so we can trace where the holes are onto the sketch above. From here, I'm going to do some construction lines. Their sole purpose is going to be for mirroring when I get up to that. And now I can start to draw for real. I'm going to draw two circles, select them and use the equals constraint to get their diameters to match. It's an M3 bolt, but I'm going to give a healthy four millimeter clearance. And then finally some straight lines from the edges, which should make them a tangent trim or M shortcut and remove the portions I don't need. My final dimension is from the two center points to set the width. I want these to be quite big, so I'm gonna go for nine millimeters. Now you notice we're not quite symmetrical here, so let's apply this constraint. We'll click on the center line and then perhaps the two center points of the arcs, which will move them into the correct position. 
At this point, I'm rotating the camera just to make sure I can get a hex tool to either side of the slot. And it looks like the slot can actually be bigger. So I am increasing it to 10 millimeters. Let's select the mirror tool and use these construction lines to copy over my slots from left to right. And then select the tool again with my horizontal line. And then I'm gonna copy both of the slots from above down to the lower portion. Let's extrude, telling it we wanna remove and we wanna cut the whole way through. And there we have it. We've built a sloppy design that's going to allow us to have very precise alignment once everything is bolted to the top of the fence. As a final step in getting this ready for printing, I added some cutout for the mounting bolts that go into the top of the motor. Here's the printed part in PETG in case the motor gets warm. And those recesses I added for the bolts at the end help everything sit flush. Held roughly in place with some M3 bolts and washers, you can see that this, as designed, has quite a lot of slop. But that should ensure that we'll be able to get perfect alignment later on when we're awkwardly standing on a ladder at the top of the fence. Most of the time with these design projects, we're aiming for extreme precision, but it's not always the best way. Rather than waste time and filament, printing iterations until something is absolutely perfect, consider adding slop for later adjustability. Even my overall approach for this project matches this. I've started making this even though I haven't finished the design because I've left myself space for the electronics to sit once I've figured them out. If you've got a tip for adding leeway to your projects, please leave them below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy designing your own custom 3D printed parts. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.